Hey everybody, and welcome back to another Weather Sim forecast. And in today's forecast, we're going to be talking about a large storm that's going to be coming to the United States over the next couple of days, including today, where we will be talking about the potential for widespread showers and thunderstorms across much of the Ohio Valley and down into the deep south, where we could maybe even get a couple of stronger thunderstorms to develop. The other thing that we'll need to watch for despite the chances for showers and thunderstorms will be those winds. We're going to have a very strong pressure gradient ongoing which could bring widespread winds between 40 to 50 miles per hour with some areas maybe even getting close to 60 miles per hour across much of the Midwest and Ohio Valley and perhaps even down there as far down south as Tennessee will need to be on alert as we will have once again those higher wind gusts um, around especially as we head throughout today and even into tomorrow before we start to see um, Christmas on fire next week with a big December heat wave on the way and that could definitely be quite surprising to a lot of people out there as we could be talking about not only the 60s but some areas maybe even as far north as the plains the central plains I should say could see temperatures even in the 70s guys so this is definitely going to be a really big flip once again as we head into next week especially but before we get to that um, before we get to that December heat wave I first want to talk about the storm that will be impacting the United States over the next few days and I first want to start off with today and the surprising thing that the storm prediction center actually got rid of that marginal risk for severe weather across the lower Ohio Valley. So it really just looks like we're going to be talking about just general run-of-the-mill thunderstorms. Now that doesn't mean we can't get a strong thunderstorm because if you guys are wondering the difference, a severe thunderstorm either produces winds greater than 58 miles per hour and or large hail of one inch in diameter or greater, which is quarter size. A non-severe thunderstorm produces hail that's smaller than an inch and or winds of um, less than 58 miles per hour. So if the winds are weaker than 58 and hail is smaller than one inch, then that's just considered a small thunderstorm. But if it's stronger than that, then we consider that a severe thunderstorm. So I just want to make sure you guys understand exactly what the difference is. And like I said, we could still maybe get a few stronger thunderstorms over here across areas of the Ohio Valley and even down there into the deep south but one new thing that did change though is that we actually do now have a marginal level one out of five threat for a few isolated severe thunderstorms across the North Carolina coast which is pretty new by the way this actually just got issued by the storm prediction center this morning so we will definitely need to keep an eye on that area closely as it does look like the main concern is going to be those damaging winds okay damaging winds appear to really be the main and only concern around here. There's no hail threat and nor is there any tornado threat around. So we're really just talking about some isolated damaging winds possible. But other than that, we're really not looking like um, anything too crazy. But once again, we still can't roll out a few stronger thunderstorms really anywhere in this um, light green color. Tomorrow, we continue to see those thunderstorms roll on through the east coast and we even continue to see that linger across the northwest and then on day three it's really just going to be the northwest that will be in play for potentially a few um, isolated thunderstorms around which we will continue to keep an eye on closely now let's um, go ahead and take a look at the overall pattern across the United States um, so that we guys know what will be happening and you guys can see that over here across the northeast and as well as the um, I-95 corridor 
is currently doing with some gusty winds as of right now that are not caused by storms so these will be you know your sustained winds which will definitely be um, quite high but these are mainly for gusts okay we could be talking about maybe some wind gusts as high as 40 even 50 miles per hour over here across parts there in the in the northeast while we do also have some very strong wind gusts even ongoing across the areas of the midwest and especially the plains as of right now now i do expect a lot of those wind gusts to actually move eastward so all this um tan color that you see will likely move eastward as the day goes on today and that means areas across the ohio valley will need to continue to watch this because once we head i would say about the afternoon today that's when a lot of these winds are going to be rolling eastward which could also bring some gusts as high as 50 miles per hour which we will talk about um, in a little bit and then we also do have um, once again some of those at McFerrick River events that are currently ongoing still bringing not only snowfall but also even some flooding issues to areas of the Pacific Northwest and we even got some dense fog ongoing down here across the southern United States all due to temperature and dew point tying each other. Now, let's also um, take a look at the ingredients that we need for severe weather. And I'm mainly just sh showing you guys this so that way you guys can at least understand why we could maybe get a few stronger thunderstorms on in here. And this is unstable, Cape. So this kind of tells you how unstable the atmosphere is. And you guys can see that this does want to show some pretty unstable energy down here across the deep south, but also wants to show some of that up here across areas of the lower Ohio Valley, including Southern Illinois, Indiana, and Kentucky, with Cape values as high as 200 joules per kilogram, definitely possible. Now, that energy will quickly head out, but we will still have some remaining, so we will still need to watch that closely as we could maybe get a couple rounds of showers and thunderstorms today, and then that Cape will be completely out of here by the time we head into our Friday, which will be tomorrow. Now, what about dew points. Dew points are also going to be pretty elevated too, and this is actually even more moist, guys, compared to what was shown on this model. So if you guys remember the, when we looked at these dew points in the last video, these were only showing like 52 degree dew points um, as far north as areas of the Ohio River, but now this is showing up to 56 degree dew points, which is actually only a couple of degrees away from the criteria for severe weather because if you guys didn't know the National Weather Service says you need about 57 degree dew points for at least some severe weather and that's only as long as the jet stream is really strong and we also have some energy to work with and so we're kind of right at that criteria once again for maybe um, a stronger thunderstorm or two and I will you know say that we might get an isolated strong to severe thunderstorm actually because if we also look at the wind shear, look how strong this is, guys. Very strong wind shear, even as far down south as Mississippi, where not only do we have those 60-degree dew points, but look at that. We also got um, some pretty strong energy down there, too, as well. So this will actually be um, something to watch for, especially as we head into the afternoon hours today. And this actually surprises me once again because the ingredients for severe weather are actually actually still pretty favorable okay we actually still got all the ingredients that we need for severe weather it's just that the storm prediction center still doesn't think there's necessarily enough for there to be severe weather but once again that doesn't mean we can't get a stronger thunderstorm or two so i just need you guys to be on alert for that especially since the latest from this model really wants to once again increase that moisture um wind shear and even that energy and keep in mind that this is the ARRR model. It actually usually does a pretty good job on this stuff, so we're definitely going to, you know, believe that this is about how it could play out. So I want you guys to be on alert for that, and we will definitely need to watch the next Storm Prediction Center update, as I would not be surprised at all if the marginal risk um, did get 
added back. Um, and that's only if the Storm Prediction Center does do that, but it's not a guarantee either, but we will keep an eye on that closely. The other thing I want to show you guys is going to be the lightning flash density. This is just showing you guys that we really are going to have quite a bit of energy once again on going. And just look at that. We got red showing up, even areas of purple. That is some pretty strong um, rumbles of thunder showing up right there. Now, that doesn't mean we can't get rumbles of thunder like in this blue or gray. Whenever we see this gray and blue pop up, that's still always an indication that we could maybe Maybe get a few rumbles of thunder here and there but we also got once again even some of that orange and yellow showing up even as far down south as Mississippi so we will need to watch that very closely as we will likely be talking about a couple of stronger thunderstorms here and there maybe even one or two becoming severe even though the storm prediction center does not have that in play. Now, let's take a look at how this might play out because really the main thing, despite some areas of showers and maybe even a few thunderstorms out ahead of the line, the main event is going to come this afternoon where we're going to actually have a pretty strong looking line of thunderstorms rolling on through. And just look at that from Michigan all the way down there into Mississippi, just a really strong line of thunderstorms rolling on through, which will definitely bring some, you know, pretty concerning, um, areas of wind I would say because if everything comes together just right we might see some gusty winds from this um, storm so whenever I'm saying gusty winds I think we're probably going to be staying under severe weather criteria in terms of those winds but that doesn't mean um, this isn't going to be dangerous because still even up to 50 mile per hour winds can still cause some issues so winds up to 50 miles per hour are still looking possible along this line from areas of Indiana all the way back down there into areas of Tennessee and Mississippi and you guys can actually kind of see that on this model right here look at that we could be talking about winds once again as high as 50 miles per hour across much of the Ohio Valley and that will be just right out of ahead of that line and look at that even shows um, a stronger wind gust around too as we take this forward look at that maybe even up to you know 50 miles per hour as far down south as areas of Kentucky so really showing, once again, some pretty strong winds out of ahead of that line before we will likely start to clear out. And we will still actually have some winds even on going on the back side of this system, which will be right after the cold front rolls on through. But keep in mind that these winds will also be a lot weaker too. But still, winds up to 40 miles per hour can definitely cause some problems. So make sure you guys are prepared even as we enter our Friday. Now, the last thing I want to look at is going to be the temperatures and once again we're, we're looking at a fiery Christmas out here with well above normal temperatures um, looking likely as far down south as Texas look at that we got a 90 to 100 percent chance of seeing above normal temperatures down here in Texas and once again even a 80 maybe even a 100 percent chance of getting that even across areas of the Rockies Midwest Plains and even over there towards the Ohio Valley so really looking like once again quite a big warm Warm up on the way as we head to Christmas, which does include Christmas, by the way, because we're looking from December 23rd all the way through the 27th. So really looking like it's going to be quite a, once again, warm Christmas out there. And same goes even as we look a little farther out, because you can even see on the 8 to 14 day outlook, maybe not as above average, but still really looking like it's going to be quite a big one out there. And if you're wondering about precipitation, it's really looking like we're going to stay in a pretty pretty similar pattern where we get once again just continuous storms coming off of the west coast and move eastward while um, if we look a little bit later we will continue to see once again a very similar weather pattern ongoing not only across the west but we might even see you know a little bit of a drier pattern even over here across the south which actually is good news because we already got in a lot of rain but thank you all so much for watching i hope you guys enjoyed today's video make sure to subscribe to the channel
as we will continue to keep you guys up to date with the latest. And once again, if you haven't followed me on Facebook yet, I encourage you to do that as we are very, very close to being able to go live on Facebook. Once again, we need about 100 followers to go live and we are only about um, 20 away from that. So I encourage you to do that. And I, of course, really appreciate your guys' support. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your Thursday out there. And I hope to see you guys in the next one. Thank you all so much for watching and goodbye.